Today we're going to be talking about my three favorite plants to use in reptile and amphibian enclosures. These aren't exactly herps, but... So if you know me, you know that I am pretty good at killing plants. Uh, and these are the three plants that I actually have not killed and I've been able to keep alive pretty easily uh, in the enclosures because they're all pretty hardy. The first one I've got right here is pothos. Uh, there's three types of pothos. I believe this is gold dust pothos, I think it's called. Uh, it's also known as devil's ivy and it's probably the most common to see in people's reptile enclosures. Uh, I'd say probably the first reason for that is you can use it in soil or in water. So whether it's an aquarium or an aquatic reptile or amphibian, or if it's a reptile or amphibian on the land, you can plant it in dirt, uh, or like I said, put it in water. Uh, it's also very good at just living in basically any type of environment. Uh, they can't be overwatered, so they're great for tropical setups or moderate setups, and I've even found that they're not too bad um, in dry enclosures, but it's best to keep them in moderate to tropical. If you forget to water them a few days, that's no problem. Uh, I've gone on vacations for like a week where I hadn't watered them at all, and they were just fine. As you can see, you can have them grow up basically in an up direction by putting multiple pieces together, but it technically grows in a vine. So, whoops, this is two pieces. Uh, you can put it up, you can hang it up on a backdrop, you can put it on the ground, um, and then it has roots that just grow all out of different parts. And so you can plant it in all sorts of different ways. It also grows super fast, so it can really fill up an enclosure pretty quickly. That might mean that you have to prune it uh, every so often but that's not too difficult just to snip different parts off. And if you snip these parts off, you can actually use them to grow more pothos, which is what I'm doing right now, so that I have more. It also just looks really cool. It's got these just nice bright green leaves, so it's a nice uh, addition to any enclosure. It's also really cheap and you can get it basically anywhere, whether it's online or in stores. So yeah, that's my first favorite plant to eat. Whoops, water's flying everywhere. Uh, to use in reptile and amphibian enclosures, it's always a good option. Uh, secondly, I've got the snake plant. Uh, and as you can see, it grows mostly upwards. Um, it's not a very fast grower. I've had this for a while and it hasn't grown very much. However, there is this like little baby uh, snake plant that's growing off to the edge. I'm guessing I could probably take that off in the future and have a second snake plant. Uh, I forgot to say this about pothos, but it goes for pothos and snake plants. And for most reptiles and amphibians, it's not uh, toxic or anything. So chances are your animal can eat this and they'll be fine. Just make sure you check with your specific species before planting it in there. But the snake plant is a bit different from pothos. Yes, it is definitely easy to care for. Um, however, it can be overwatered and you want to keep it in more dry enclosures. I use this with my blue tongue skink and she seems to just dig it up like every single day. Luckily, it's okay. Uh, being dug up, I just have to replant it every so often. I'd say one of the downsides is it does grow mostly upwards. Uh, so if your tank is more of a long or flat tank, uh, you might have some difficulties because it might start brushing on the top of the enclosure. So if you have more of an arboreal or vertical setup, uh, I think these are better for that. So yeah, that's the second plant I've had the most luck with uh, in enclosures. The final one is the umbrella plant. Um, these guys, they actually end up growing bark, but since this one's so small, it doesn't really have any bark yet but as it grows, uh, it can grow basically into a tree. You can get them really small like this for pretty cheap uh, and dirt is coming off everywhere. I use this with my American Fowlers and Oak Toads and they seem to like it. They like to sit all under it like I have little clumps of them uh, and they can kind of dig up under those roots. They're pretty easy to care for. I haven't had problems with killing them. Uh, I'd say they may need more moderate watering. I really don't know enough about them to tell you the details on care, but they are pretty simple. Like the snake plants, these grow upwards, so um, what I usually have to do is snip them on the top. You can see there's kind of a little shriveled part just right on the top that's uh, sealing up because I cut them right there. So one of the reasons I really like these is because their name says it's an umbrella plant, and it's because these little uh, leaf parts that stick out are like little umbrellas. So I like being able to use them for lots of coverage for the animals because they can feel really safe under uh, a lot of them if you have multiple planted. So like I said, these grow mostly upward. These are gonna be best for more arboreal animals or vertical tanks, uh, but they're still definitely a good choice if you want something just that's nice and bright and green uh, and is simple to care for. Uh, some things that go with all three of these is they don't need very specific lighting. They definitely do better if they have UVB or fluorescent light 
uh, like you would do with most plants, but even just having them next to a window uh, to get some sun, not direct sun, uh, but some sun onto the different plants will help it grow uh, more easily. Uh, I'd say all three of these are easily available at basically just any shop that sells plants because they are all so common. So they're not too unique. You might see them in a lot of reptile enclosures, like I've started to notice as I've been getting more uh, into the plants. But I still really like the look of all these. We've got the umbrella plant, the pothos, and the snake plant. But hopefully this helps you out with picking out some good uh, natural plants to help make your tanks look a little bit better and uh, to give your animals a bit more shelter and make them feel like they're in more of a natural environment. So that's it for this herp highlights, even though it's more of a plant's highlights, but close enough. Uh, yeah, that's it. I'm Alex and thanks for watching.